Hi, my name is Jackie Murray, and I want to welcome all of you to our Summer Learning, the Tech Infused class. This is kind of a sequel to the one we just finished up, the Tech Infused Teacher. In this one, you're going to get more activities, more videos, different selection of topics, and kind of focus on putting, uh, using technology to turn your class around to make it exciting and fun and innovative and cutting edge and make everyone want to be involved in it. So that's what these activities and the resources you'll be getting are for. Uh, my name is Jackie Murray, as I said. I've been teaching, teaching for about 35 years from um, preschool through grad classes. Um, most recently, I've spent the last 15 plus years on technology, teaching K through eight teaching grad school classes, and then mentoring and coaching teachers and school districts in how to blend technology into their curriculum, into their mission plans, into their classrooms without driving the teachers nuts and taking lots of extra time in professional development. Using tools that are intuitive, easy to learn, and exciting. So, um, You'll, you might know me from my blog, Ask a Tech Teacher. Um, lots of resources there, lots of free lesson plans available. Lots of, you can always reach me there to ask me questions about something on your mind. I discuss a lot of pedagogy there too, to help one-to-one -one schools and using Chromebooks and curriculum maps, stuff like that on there. So you can reach me there as well as at my Gmail, askatechteacher at gmail.com. Okay, so the activities included in the Tech Infused class are from a poll I ran earlier in the year. You might have participated in it to find out what you wanted to learn in your classroom. Some of those I put in the first class, the Tech Infused teacher, and some we put in this class. There were just too many, and they were all great. When I talk to my professional learning network, my PLN, they're the same topics they're all talking about as they would like to learn and um, use in their classrooms. So I thought we got a really good list uh, of activities and topics to cover. The framework of the class is going to be the Wiki Classroom. So you'll, you'll join the, you'll get a, a join code for a Wiki Classroom once you're, yeah, you probably already have it or you wouldn't be watching this video, but it's great for you in your classrooms to have a, a wiki classroom. And then you find all the resources neatly arranged. And then we have virtual meetings, get togethers with each other on weekends with Google Hangouts and Twitter chats. Couple varieties, there's more than that, but in three weeks I wanted to cover the two most popular with you. And we'll use those to get to know each other a little better that face-to-face -face is invaluable. You, the, the blended sort of learning where you're not all online, you're not all sitting in a classroom, it's a blended thing, is really important in education. I don't know that they'll ever get away from that. It's just not the same. So you're going to um, have activities you'll do during the week, resources you'll read, projects you'll complete, um, some collaborating with your classmates. I, I don't grade based on your success that you did the project perfectly. I base uh, I grade based on that you tried it. There's a lot of learning done in failure. I don't have to tell most of you that. You know it. And I, I recognize that. So the idea is that you try these daunting tools. Test them out. Try them out. See what happens. See which you like or don't. Everyone has a different learning style. So you don't want, you, you want the tools that suit your learning style, but you want others because you'll have students who learn differently. So you're going to try them all, see how they go. And um, part of the class, the, one of the most popular parts is that you have access to a master teacher where you can ask questions. It very often will be me, but we have some other ones if you ask topics I'm not real familiar with. And you can ask us questions that are not necessarily part of what's going on in the class. You might have something else you want to know about. So th that feel free to do that. You also post it on our discussion boards and your classmates can weigh in, give you their experiences. Okay, um, the goals of this three weeks is that you will feel like you can infuse technology in your classroom without being too difficult, without spending hours in preparation, without confusing the students. You're going to learn how to teach yourself. 
So you'll find the tools that are easy for you to learn. You'll 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 know you know how basically tools are set up. You're going to apply that basic template to new tools and see how they're learned. And you're going to teach your students to do the same thing, so that they won't always say, "Well, I've never used Animoto before. How do I do it?" Well, look at the tools, the toolbars, the guidance, the videos available. I bet you can figure it out yourself. And a really important part is building your PLN, your personal professional learning network. You, you need to get other professionals in the teaching industry around you that you can go to when you have questions because you, you won't always have someone there. You might be the only one in your school who's doing technology and you'll need other people to go to. So a core of people that you feel comfortable talking to is, is really important. So we're going to start it in this class. You are going to be each other's start for the professional learning network. Okay, your objectives. Add transformative tech to your class. You don't want to, okay, last year you used the books, you used, everyone did a play to present a book report, you did posters, boards that were put around the classroom for a week and then everyone took them home and stuck them in the back of the closet. We, we, we want to do something different from now on. Something where that poster they made that took them hours and you were shocked by, by the conclusions they reached. We want to make that available all the time in a central cloud-based location that students can always refer to that upcoming students you can say here's some great posters kids did so transformative tech that is easy to use that lasts that's collaborative that um, inspires students you're gonna dig into web tools you've heard colleagues talk about I'll, I have a lot listed in the class, plenty. If you had no ideas at all, you'd be perfectly fine. But you might have some your colleagues are talking about you want to know more about. And then I'm very willing to have you say, I'd like to try this tool because everyone at my school is talking about it. Wordle. And I, I've never used it and they all love it. So you're going to try it. And I think that's perfectly good. Use tech to ignite reading and writing. Now, I only touch on it in this class. Uh, there's a class I, I go into it much more thoroughly, but we do touch on it because technology is a perfect match for teaching reading and writing. And you'll you'll see when we get to the unit on writing, I think it's writing, um, actually either of them, you'll you'll be amazed how well suited technology is to teaching reading and writing to non-readers and non-writers. We're going to use web-based locations, blogs, wikis, discussion forums, Google Apps to collaborate and share. You're not working in a vacuum anymore. You're working in a group and we're all benefiting by each other's knowledge. You're going to use different tech tools that reach the same goal, but in different ways. Maybe as audio, maybe as artistic, maybe as videos, maybe text, but different learning styles for students so that what you can tell students, write your book report, pick one of these five methods, or pick your own, but it'll, it'll play to their different strengths. You're going to get much more comfortable blending technology into your curriculum, not taking a week out because I've got to teach PowerPoint before we do this project. No, we don't do it that way anymore. Now you're doing a, a summative project on colonial America using PowerPoint or using a slideshow, and I won't even say PowerPoint really, using a slideshow as the vehicle because Haiku Deck, any number of other options will, uh, will let students do so much with slideshows that they, there's well beyond current slideshow thinking. Create digital portfolios, these bulky binders that everyone lugs around and they get lost and the pages fall out. We don't want to use those. We want a digital portfolio that's easy to use, easy to save to. We're going to talk about those. Those are your wikis. You're going to create your own digital portfolio page. One page, which is really plenty for younger kids. Older kids probably want more. We're going to talk about curriculum maps too. I'm always surprised how many people need to create these. And I guess I'm just as surprised how many don't have one. So we're going to spend some time on this and help you start your curriculum map 
and see how, how you can do it. It's not something you'll do before school starts in the fall. It's something you might start, lay a, a template out for, but you will, it'll take you a year and then it'll take you another year. And that's your curriculum then. But it'll be so valuable when you're done with it. And then we've talked about develop the core of professional learning network. Okay, the objectives are not that I'm teaching and you're watching. You won't find a video for every single step of everything I do. If you need a video because you just don't understand how to do that certain tool I'm talking about, Adobe Voice or whatever it is, you, you will probably go search on Adobe's website or on YouTube to find some videos that address it in a way that makes sense for you. And it's the same way you'll teach your students to. Now, yeah, little kids aren't going to go to YouTube and search, but you will. You'll go to YouTube, you'll find the videos, you'll embed them where the students can reach them. Older kids are pretty fine searching YouTube. They're probably doing it if they haven't told you they are. There's no passive learning. You're not going to sit back and read and then just let the three weeks go by. It is very active. I want you posting to Twitter. I want you posting in the discussion forums on your digital portfolio. I want you involved in our weekend Google Hangouts. So it is very active. And I, I, if, if this is outside your comfort zone, I, I like that. I want you to learn from outside your comfort zone. I want you to leave your comfort zone and, and see what happens. And nothing bad really happens. You might fail, but refer back to what we've already talked about with failure. Feeling, feeling like you can't is not acceptable. So don't ever feel that. The, the worst you'd say is, I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting this done. And then what do you do? What's your next step? Ask questions, research, whatever your next step is. But the, the conclusion isn't, okay, this is outside of my abilities. So we don't even go there. Okay, time commitment is 6 to 12 hours a week. That's really up to you. I gear each week for about an hour a day, five, five hours, and then one hour Google Hangout. And I, if you go beyond five hours in the week for the lesson, you can tell me you spent five hours on one, reviewing one set of resources. You got carried away and distracted and loved it so much and didn't get to the rest. I, I'm fine with that. Uh, you, you do have to get 60% of the work done to get a certificate. So keep that in mind so you don't want to do that too often. But I, I'm fine with that otherwise because I like, you, you only have so much time. And if, if learning gets onerous and bleeds into your other, the other important parts of your life, you, you won't want to do it. And I don't want that to happen. Okay, so that's your time commitment. Um, Google Hangouts, you're going to arrive with answers to specific questions. You're going to be prepared with evidence from what you've worked on during the week. You're going to be ready to interact with your classmates. And you're going to plan to share your teaching experiences. So when we talk about digital citizenship or teaching writing with tech, you're going to say, yeah, I used comics in my class and this is what happened. And share that experience with with classmates so we can all learn from it. Um, do check the Google Hangout Twitter chat tab because I do change the questions occasionally during the week, especially when someone emails me or adds a discussion item that I think is really good. I, I might add it to the Twitter chat or the Google Hangout list. Okay, you've got this booklet and I'm going to go over it and see what I might want to review with you. Okay, um, I'm just, I don't want to go over stuff you probably already know, but let's see. You've got this booklet. If you don't have it, definitely get in touch with me. It's also in the wiki and there's an updated version, slightly revised, so you might get that. Download it from the wiki. It's on our um, weekly schedule page. Um, we've gone through all that. Okay. Here's the activities. Here's the packing slip. This is the stuff you got with it. And these are the ones that don't have a link there. They're in your wiki. 
If you have trouble downloading any of these, let me know. I know sometimes they seem to time out, and then I have to upload it a different way, but that's fine. Videos, okay. Introduction, we've gone through all that. Your schedule, here's your weekly schedule. This is also in your wiki, so I won't go over it. We'll go over that weekly. Activities, this is how we collect them. So your weekly schedule, let's say something like um, review curriculum maps, and you'll go here and you'll find curriculum maps and review the activities. So that's that. Yeah, I think we're okay. I think that's it. All right. Um, over at, so our, our classroom is through Wiki, so you are already joined, but it's a great way to do it. You can see you can add a join code that you then send out to people and it automatically joins them. Sidebar has all the activities over here that you'll be dealing with. A lot of information for you. The, the really important ones, overview is exactly that. The essentials are the basics that you'll want to know about and links to those. Um, mentors is about your, your mentors, the people running the class. This is where the activities are, so you'll go here to find when it says review activities for building a tech infused classroom, this is where you'll go and pick your, your resources from. Google Hangouts and Twitter chats each week. It's a different one. And um, this is from the last class. But I'll, I'll probably leave it there cause, so you can see what's going on, what happened in the other class. And then here's the questions you'll cover. Important is discussions. This is the only place you want to add discussions because otherwise it gets all over the place and we can never find them. So this is where you'll put questions and expect answers from everyone. This is where you'll go to help your classmates rather than anywhere else. Resources. This is where you'll find lesson plans. If not in the booklet, you'll find them here. A couple posters that I promised you are here also. And comments. Okay, weekly schedule. This is where you'll go every week. These are the basic links you'll use. This is our video with all the videos you'll go through. I don't have this one on it yet, but as soon as I do, it'll be the first one on here. And then this shows you each week what you're doing. Each week you're going to have a, a, a exit ticket and you'll try one of these options and you can also suggest one to me because I'd, I'd love to learn more from you. So I've got three there but there can be more and then I have the Google form here which is a great exit ticket too. And then your class member pages you'll go here and you'll find your name. So let's say you're Angelo you click there and, and start by filling as much of this as you can in. Every week you put your activities here. If you've taken the Tech Infused Teacher class, then it's exactly the same way. So you're going to find have no problem following this. And then skills. If, you, if there's any particular skills you really get stuck on, I have the ones that I've been asked about in the past and I thought needed additional clarification. And here they are. So you can go through and see if yours is in here. You can, if it isn't, and you really can't figure it out, let me know and I'll make a, a, a video and throw it in here with the rest of the skills. I think that's it. All right. And then you're going to assess yourself. If you were in the first class, you know how that went. You just put an X where you, under the activity you did, let me click here and we'll look exactly at yours. And you um, simply, your name will be here. I haven't put any other names in, but you'll find more names when you get there. And you'll um, check off the things you did. Here's week one, then you'll have week two and week three. And just check off what you did. If something doesn't seem to fit with the requirements, let me know. Sometimes I make a mistake. I leave a column out or put one in that shouldn't be there and just let me know. I'll fix it. Um, and we have a spot here for, because I'll need you guys to vote on when you'd like the weekend meetings. So that's where you grade yourself. And I think I'm getting and then your certificate. It'll fill in all the topics that you finished. If you didn't finish them, it won't be listed, but as long as you did 60% of the work, you will get a certificate with the items you finished. And I take this list from your self-assessment. So that's pretty easy. All right, any questions, find me here, and I'll be happy to help you. Um, watch this, then.
pretty soon you'll see the week one summary. I, I, those are hopefully are under five minutes just to specifically address what you're doing that week. Okay, guys. Very exciting. I'm excited to have you all here, and I'm looking forward to learning from you. Talk to you soon. Bye.